you for coming to Salt Lake City, sir. Thank you so much for having me, Salt Lake. This is fantastic. And they're, and they're all here for you. And ten years ago, when you... Some of them are here for John Barrowman. <laughs> He's a likable guy, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, now, ten years ago, when you got your start, on, it was uh, it was on uh, Queer as Folk. Queer as Folk. That was. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you imagine? <laughs> no. I was I was acting in Toronto, and I don't really. I kind of think of my career when I was in Toronto, when I was acting in Canada. Um, although I met a Heartland fan today, that was really cool. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I think of that first part of my career kind of like, kind of like um, high school, college. And then when I moved to Los Angeles and I got my first job, which was NCIS LA. Yeah. <laughs> They bring David Caruso's sunglasses and gun to him on like a, on like a royal pillow. <laughs> anyway, um, when I was in Toronto and I got that first job on, on Queer as Folk, it was as a spin instructor. And I was a spin instructor at the time. And I told my agent, if I can't get this job on Queer as Folk as a spin instructor, I'm quitting the business. <laughs> It worked out. Just like all of you now to imagine him as your spin instructor. <laughs> now, I, we're going to let people start asking questions, and I'm sure there's a lot of arrow questions, and I, and I gotta tell you, just me, because you're, you're in our TV, in our living rooms, all the time. It's like you're our friend. And I would just want to, I would want to say, as, as a friend, I'd say, Oliver, buddy. <laughs> It's me, I'm the guy who lives downstairs. I just, I just don't want to bother you, but I love you, and I love Felicity, okay? But you know this will not end well, and as a friend, I just gotta, please, just, is someone going to do that this season? I mean, you know, I don't know, I don't, how, well, I do know. <laughs> But, um, boy, you know, if we don't take chances with our hearts, what are we even doing here? Fair enough. All right. I won't, I won't try to talk you out of it. How much can you tell us about the new season? I know that... Oh, about, man. I've seen, very, very soon. I've seen four episodes from the new season. Now, when we film an episode... We film it, the editor does an assembly, and then the director does a cut. Uh, there's a cut for the studio, there's a cut for the network, and then there's a cut for all of you. And I almost always see the network cut, and it doesn't have color correction, it doesn't have the proper sound score. You never realize how important music is until you watch a show without it. I'll never forget watching the third episode of our first season, and there was one sequence that I thought worked particularly well, and I realized that they put the Dark Knight score as temporary music for it. And this is great music. This seems really intense. What's going on? Did they blow the budget? What? <laughs> but no, it ends up, you know, we end up putting our own music, and we have a wonderful composer, and I think we do some of the best music on TV, but um, thank you. But once you get past the network cut and into the studio cut, it's a little bit of a slippery slope, because you're used to the episode being 41 minutes, and the studio cut is usually around 44, 45, and it's even less special effects and sound and all that stuff. So the first time I saw a studio cut, I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> Relative to what I'm used to seeing. Last night, I watched the director's cut for episode 304, and it was awesome. It is our 50th episode. It is worthy of a 50th episode. And I tweeted this a couple of weeks ago. It has 
it has a scene and a confrontation in it that has literally been two years, two and a half years in the making. Yeah. No spoilers, it's in his contract, sorry. That's as much as he I give away me. way too much. You did I do. Of. I do. <laughs> you guys will trick me into something and uh, so everyone put their phones down. We'll have like a completely frank conversation about the entire third season. You can do that, right? <laughs> you stop videoing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> alright, alright, I'll, I'll put mine over there. <laughs> What can you tell us? I mean, just a no. I, I, a can, little, no, just no, I, I, I can tell you a bunch. I, I can tell you that uh, that we have uh, Katie Lotz coming back as Canary in our first episode. Okay. We have Mr. Barrowman joining us as a regular this year. We have Raz Al Ghul. Another, we do another fun. Uh, we do another fun travel episode where we go to Corto Maltese. That's exciting. And Oliver is in Hong Kong. That's also very interesting. And uh, I recently got four days off out of an eight-day shoot, which is a record for me because I swear to God, it's a record. Although I don't have another day off until January. The, the episode is titled The Secret Origin of Felicity Smoke. And Felicity and uh, Felicity's mom afforded me four days of vacation. It was lovely. Now, I, I read this, and I hope it's not an internet rumor, that there is a crossover episode with yeah. the Flash coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, well, I'm, spoiler alert, I'm in the pilot of The Flash, which is really exciting, and, and then we have another character that is crossing over in the fourth episode of The Flash, and then episode 108 of The Flash, 308 of Arrow are a big two-night crossover extravaganza. As a fan, I'll think of that as a, as a mini Justice League movie. Okay, Justice League movie, sure. That's how I'll think of it myself. Yeah. Should we get some questions? Let's do it. Where do we want to start? Over here? You first? Sure. Hi, Stephen. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm glad you're in Salt Lake. It's exciting. Um, my question is, as an actor, well, mm -hmm. Oliver's kind of a man whore. I mean, um, so, Look, wait, Oliver's he, not kind of a man whore. He, you, no, Oliver's like Lord Varys this year. It's terrible. <laughs> so, my question is, as an I'm actor... Glad, I'm glad people got that joke. <laughs> is, it, is it more awkward to film those, like, those scenes, those kissing scenes, sure. with someone you first met, or with someone that you've known for a while, like, you know, like, Katie or... The... The, the... 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 I mean, the weird... <laughs> My first regular job in the business was a hoe. Right? It was a hooker on Hun. You saw a little bit of footage in that cool video package. I like that. That was cool. Um, so, I guess the point is, is that after playing a hooker, everything else is relatively easy. <laughs> Get, it does get a little bit funny, and I, I feel like I have a good trick for it. Like, especially if you're kissing somebody that you, you've known for a long time. When you're in rehearsals, the first time that you have to kiss them, kiss them really passionately, but on the nose. It sort of cuts the tension. Good question. Thank you. How about over here this time? I wanted to ask two questions. Uh, the first is, have you ever been injured on the set? And the second is, how do you prepare for those darker scenes where somebody's dying or somebody's getting injured and hurt and you just have to be that emotional, darker side of yourself? As far as injuries go, I've been, I've been very fortunate, uh, knock on wood. Uh, I have I, I bashed my calf hard in the first season in episode 10. 
and it blew up. And I was wearing a you know a high sock, which acted almost like a like a tourniquet. So all the all the swelling bubbled up. And I took a picture of it before I went to bed. Big day on set today. Look at my leg. Isn't it terrible? And I woke up the next morning to nine missed calls from my mom. <laughs> Why haven't you gone to the hospital? Do you have a blood clot? Do you need a doctor? I can be in Vancouver. By the way, she's on the other coast of Canada. In like 30 minutes! No, Mom, Mom. Mom, it's fine. It looks way worse than it is. Uh, and I pinched a nerve in my back last year. Uh, oh, God. And uh, that was really painful. But as, as far as injuries go, no, I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been very fortunate so far. But fortunate because of how prepared we are and how safe uh, the stunt team makes things for me. Um, as for the the emotional scenes, as an actor, it's not my method. I'm, I don't really have a method in general, if, if you if you've heard of that expression, to use experiences from my own life. Uh, in the instances of of major characters that we've had um, die on the show, uh, oftentimes it's. It's me being sad that, that, that I'm losing a friend. And, and I mean someone to hang around with on set. Uh, that was the case with, with Colin Donnell. It was the case with, with, uh, with Susanna Thompson. It's, it's sad because you spend time with these people and, and, and you, know, you get the news. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I certainly don't want to compare it to you know, someone getting a bad diagnosis, but it's been, it's been Two consecutive years that I've got a phone call from the producers saying we're killing, and I'm like, oh, really? Are we sure? <laughs> but then the evil creative side of me goes, oh, that's gonna provide so much story. <laughs> but um, that's another thing too is uh, is we always have flashbacks, and uh, we get my good friend Colin Donald, Mr. Tommy Merlin, back in the flashback this year. <laughs> We like the character. Over here. Hey, uh, I just want to thank you for actually being so active on social media. I Thanks. really appreciate it. I really like the uh, the workout, the training videos you posted because yep. that actually motivated me to go get a gym membership. Cool. And I'm still fat, but I've lost, <laughs> but I've lost like 15 pounds so far in the last couple of months. So. Congratulations. My question for you was, what was the audition process like to get Arrow? Did you have some creative freedom to kind of discover and create Oliver Queen? Or did the showrunners have a vision and you kind of had to fit into that? You know, you're never right for a part until you're perfect for it. You know who, uh, any Lost fans here? So Josh Holloway could never get a part on TV. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn. Like he, he. I, I remember reading like he would get close on parts, and they'd be like, "Well, you just, you know, you're not really the, you're not really the type for it." And then he gets the part of Sawyer on Lost. He's a breakout star, and the next pilot season, every single freaking breakdown says Josh Holloway type. <laughs> so, to, to answer your question. I had just, Hung had just got canceled. I was working on private practice, which, which was an amazing experience. And the breakdown for Arrow came out, and my cousin Robbie, who is uh, playing Firestorm on The Flash, that's exciting, says, have you read Arrow? I said, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and he said, look, it's a story, it's an origin story of the Green Arrow. And I said, okay. And he said, and you know, the guy's supposed to be late 20s and I'm right around that range. And the fact that I read the pilot script and I couldn't picture me, I could only picture you, is a really good sign. <laughs> so I went in, David Nutter, who directed our pilot, uh, Jeff Johns, uh, Greg Berlanti, Andrew Kreisberg, Mark Guggenheim. When I walked in, I was the first guy to audition. I read, what scene did I read? I read the scene from the pilot where Oliver uh, is, is being tortured by the three dudes. And then there was a much longer scene, which I'm really hoping the audition is, we're able to put it out on the interwebs someday where I tell the three guys how I'm gonna kill them. And I read it 
and I finish, and I look up, and everybody's just staring at me. <laughs> there were five people in the room. They said, can you please go outside? I went outside. I come back in five minutes later, there's like 31 people in the room. <laughs> Now there were other steps to go through, but I got I got the part right there. So you just you just never know. If you're an actor out there and you're having a difficult time, if you haven't found the part for you, it, it, it really never happens until it just happens so swiftly that you're just going, what the hell happened? <laughs> so if that's you right now, you keep the faith and keep working hard. Thanks, man. Thank you. Over here. My name is Blaine Cook, and my question is this. When you accepted the role uh, in Arrow, how did you train for that role, particularly in hand-to-hand -hand combat and archery? They sent me to a gentleman in uh, Los Angeles, and we just did basic martial arts training. They sent me out to Tempest Freerunning Academy to a guy named uh, Paul Diddy Darnell, and uh, he taught me all the parkour stuff. And then when I got to Vancouver, I sat down with Patricia Gonsalves, who's my archery coach, and we got right into that. And then, shortly thereafter, I met James Bamford, who's our fight choreographer. He's our stunt coordinator, or, or, or one of our stunt coordinators. And we immediately began working on all three fights in the pilot. Those were choreographed and ready to go six weeks before we started shooting. And, and the first one that I learned was the one where I pull a chair out from underneath me and I bash it in the guy's face. And, and, uh, and, and in terms of like specific martial arts, I, I really do think that a martial art is fighting on screen. Because you want to look like you're punching somebody without actually punching them. Which, by the way, is one of the most painful things that you can do. Because when you punch somebody, your, your hand is supposed to hit something. So you don't hit anything, and all this, because you punch as hard as you can, and all this blood rushes into your hand. So if you ever see me after a take, if they ever ran like B-roll and showed me, I'm just, I'm just standing there like, oh God, oh God. Because <laughs> it hurts, it's like, it's crazy. So that's, that's what I did. There you go. Thanks, man. <laughs> all right, um, is there a, are you wearing a pink cast? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta rock the pink. That a boy. So, is there a DC hero you, you would love to work with in Arrow? And is there a DC villain you would love to have Oliver face against? Oh, boy. Well, please say Gorilla Grodd, please. Pardon me? <laughs> Gorilla Grodd, please. Yeah! <laughs> um... You know, I I start to latch on to the to the Easter eggs on the show. So so for me, a DC hero, I've said Ferris Air so many frickin' times that I want Green Lantern to come on the show. As for as for a villain, I'm not gonna pick because I like to be surprised. Do you know what I'm like? You know, I. I I always thought, you know, looking back to our 16th episode in season one, when I, um, when I saved John Barrowman's life, you're welcome, uh, <laughs> and, and he's talking about Nanda Parbat and meeting a man there, and I, I, I read it and I went, oh, oh, I hope so. And so I see the little nuggets that we're dropping now, and there are villains that I like, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that for my surprise and yours. There we go. Don't be nervous. Hi. Hi, my name is Alicia, and I'm going to apologize at first. I'm actually a really nervous fast talker. Okay. So if you need me to slow down, I'll do it. But um, I was wondering, since the Green Arrow isn't a huge character, not a lot of people know him, if you could have picked any other Marvel, DC, any other superhero to play, which one would you have picked and why? Iron Man. Why? <laughs> Just because of, of all, first of all, I recently watched uh, The Winter Soldier. What an awesome movie. Like really awesome. Like really, really awesome. I have, a, I have a man crush on Anthony McKay, I think. That dude is just, 
Anyway, let me keep going. <laughs> um, I love, of, of, of all the superhero movies that have come out, post-2000, uh, uh, the, the Dark Knight trilogy, the you know uh, Man of Steel, the entire Marvel experience that we've had. What's it called? Like phase one, phase two? Is that what it, that's what it's called? Yes. yes? Thank you. <laughs> there is no better moment than the end of Iron Man one when Tony Stark stands up and says, "I am Iron Man." Swear to God, I would, I would, I would give an episodic fee to have. Well, actually, no, I wouldn't. But I would love if there was just a moment where Oliver Queen was standing in front of a bunch of people and said, "I'm the Arrow. What the hell are you gonna do about it?" Oh yeah, I want that. I want that. I want that. Like, although hopefully you would say, "I'm the Green Arrow." I, I want him to say Green Arrow. Yeah. yeah. We need a little bit more we green in the show. That. How about over here now? You. <laughs> okay, um, I have two questions for you. Alright. Okay, so the first one is, uh, what's the deal with you and Felicity? <laughs> the second one is, could you, like, stand right there so I could get a picture? <laughs> what's the deal with Felicity and I? Yeah. I'm gonna walk over and start telling you. Are you ready? Is Cameron ready? relationship with with the with the producers I think and and a real good understanding of of what I can say what I can't say and if, and if I'm ever on the fence I email somebody and I say can I can I say this um, but I'll tell you though if I ran the show if I ran a television show I would give away nothing I wouldn't even put out a review I would, I would, as soon as I knew that people were into the show, I would be like crazy, secretive, super awkward, weird, weird showrunner person. <laughs> I, which is my favorite type of showrunner. But, uh, but, but no, I, I, you know, I, has there ever been a moment, I'll tell you, there was, the, recently there was a moment where I saw an image from, from our premiere this year, and I thought that the premiere had leaked, and I, Reeked out. I was. I was like. It, it, it felt like you know. Uh, I just like something in the pit of my stomach. Just awful. And uh, it turns out it was just a. It was just a, a preview that they were putting out for the shows. <laughs> <laughs> but you've never slipped up. No, I don't think that I have ever slipped up. Um, I don't think so. I probably have. Borrow them, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I did, but they're afraid to tell me. <laughs> That's what I hope. I hope they're like, damn it, Amel messed up again. We can't do anything though, he's the arrow. God damn it. Right over here. So uh, if you were to ask my wife or some of my coworkers in the audience, I have a terribly unhealthy man crush on you. <laughs> Nothing, there's nothing wrong with a good man crush. Exactly. Um, and as much as I admire the show and your acting, which I think is fantastic, um, it's what you do off screen that I most respect you for. Thanks, man. Um, you raised $100,000 for Sophie. Yeah. Um, 
and you're also doing the same for JoJo. Yeah. You're trying to raise money, and yeah. I just wanted to know what is it that you drives you to use your celebrity to do such good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. For for starters, um, I, I'm just I, I'm like a I'm I'm like a kid with a new toy. Does that make sense? And and, and I mean that I mean that sincerely. Um, the ability to have something at the tip of my fingers that can reach so many people, and I am just I, I'm I'm constantly a believer that you know. People and large groups of people can be exceptional. For the raffle that we did for Sophie, the raffle uh, on its own raised ninety-one thousand dollars. The majority of those donations came from people giving five bucks, and everybody would write the same thing: "Boy, I wish I could give more." And I, I wanted to write back to every single person, and I said, "No, no, what you just did was perfect." Because I got to hang out with that family a couple of weeks ago, and to see the the, the difference in their uh, in their condition, their human condition, from when I first met them back in May to now, it's astounding. So I don't know how far we can take the charity, but much like how I prefer to run my own. Facebook page and to control my own method, you know, as, as opposed to just, you know, as opposed to going the corporate route and, and finding a charity and not knowing where the money is going, you know, here we have this, this opportunity where, you know, JoJo's family, last night, I just happened upon a season two Blu-ray. I thought, this would be a great idea, because I was actually signing some other ones for charity. So we put it up there. Gonna ship it out on Tuesday. And you know, less than 24 hours later, it's, it's raised twenty thousand dollars. So, it, to, to answer your question, I, 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 I just love it, man. It's it's uh, it's it makes it makes me feel good. So I guess that's the selfish aspect of it. But um, if you can help people, you absolutely should. So on Facebook, you're constantly posting videos of you doing your parkour training and arrow yeah. shooting. I was wondering how much of that did you actually do before arrow, and did any of that get you the job? Uh, to the second part of your question, no. Um, the I, I never took my shirt off in an audition. I was never, you know, I, I never. They, they never said to me, "We want this." from you, physically. Um, and, and with respect to the parkour, you know, growing up in, uh, gr I grew up in Toronto, and I played, uh, I played football, I played rugby, uh, I swam, I played volleyball, I loved sports, track and field, I used to do high jump. True story. <laughs> and then a bunch of guys who were less talented than me, even six foot seven, were beating me, and I stopped. <laughs> and I'm not bitter. And uh, so, you know, I was staying in shape. I was in LA, I was hiking all the time, but I wasn't going to the gym. I, I wasn't, you know, I, I, was just, I was just staying active because my body is my instrument in the vocation that I chose. And, uh, and, and I happened upon Arrow, and now I get to do all these cool things. The only problem is that I'm relatively demonstrative on set when it comes to doing my own stunts. <laughs> And especially stuff with heights, I'm a little bit frightened. <laughs> and I'll always say, well, no, I'm, of course I'm going to do this. And if they won't let me do it, I'll demand to do it shirtless because then it has to be me. <laughs> but then I'll get... 60 feet in the air, about to swing down and sweep Felicity off of a landmine, and I'll be trying to look cool while really peeing a little bit in my pants. <laughs> so, in the end, it's all worth it. Thanks, man. Shirtless rooftop lurking. That's what I'm over here. Um, uh, two questions. Uh, 
one, how does it how does it feel that every superhero show that's out now is like we got to set our bar up this high because hey, uh, Arrow, uh, you don't do it like this. You got to do it like Arrow does and do it like that. Can I be honest? Be the, it feels freaking fantastic. <laughs> Because I remember in 2012 when people watched the pilot of Arrow and they said, yeah, great pilot, but as we know, superhero shows don't typically work on television. And now all we, we have, we have Flash, we have Gotham, we have Constantine, iZombie, like we have, you know, uh, Netflix is doing all the stuff with, with, with Marvel, there's Agent Carter, there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like, boom. I told one of my supervisors at work that I'd get a picture with uh, shaking your hand. Is that cool? Yeah, man. Do that? Sure. You're the last one, though. All right, let's do it. So many questions. Come on up, brother. If you want to meet Steven, he's going to be here the rest of the day, so you can go yeah, over, go over and see him. I'll be here. All right. Over here. Um, hi. First off, I'm a super big fan, so hi. Really? Um, yeah. I, yeah. No way, right? Could have fooled me with your Okay, so... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, my friends are trying to get me to watch Arrow, and I'm like, no, I hate Arrow. I can't handle it. I just, it's against my religion. But, then I saw the TV show, and I am in love, so, convert. But I just couldn't handle it at first. Well, I'm glad you're willing to admit your mistake. <laughs> okay, um, so I had a, a question about, like, because I've, you're kind of a new actor to me. I've never seen you before. Um, and so I just wanted to know what got you into acting. Were you a high school drama geek or? or... Yeah, uh, I, 10th grade, I was in a play called Inherit the Wind. I love that book. I love it, I love it. And, um, uh, but I was, I was just a, I was just a, a side person in the play. I don't think I had any lines. And the only reason I did it was because we got to go on a trip and I wanted to meet girls. <laughs> I was in 10th grade. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then the drama teacher, William Schooler, at my high school, who I'm still in touch with and still very good friends with, came up to me, said, you have very good focus and you are going to play Malcolm in Macbeth next fall. Huh? <laughs> And I did. And I did. And that was that. My friend Abby here is so in love with you and she's afraid to ask, but she wants a hug and I was wondering if you could give it to her. I will give her a hug at the end of the panel. She's, yeah. Stick around, Abby, stick around. <laughs> because unlike you, she's dressed in the right brand. Yes, okay. she is. How you doing, sir? Uh, I was wondering if there was a Justice League movie, would yeah. you want to be in it, and what do you think your chances of being in it are? I don't think that logistics are going to make it possible for the television universe and the cinematic universe to coexist. We shoot for 10 months out of the year, literally 10 months, and, uh, and, and, and <laughs> boy, I'm just thinking about how difficult it's going to be for when we do the crossover episodes with The Flash. Uh, that the logistics of that. Um, sure, I'd like to be in it. A absolutely, if Hawkeye can be in the Avengers, and Green Arrow can be in the Justice League. Um, but listen, we are, and I've said this before, and I'm repeating myself, and I'm going to say it again. We are playing the television versions of. Green Arrow and Black Canary and Flash and Firestorm and uh, Arsenal on down the line. Oh yeah, Arsenal. We're playing the versions. We're trying to play the definitive versions as they exist right now. And uh, we don't need the movies to justify our television show. But boy, as, as a fan, I really, really hope that Dawn of Justice is good. Really hope. And I think it will be. Yeah. Woo! Good enough? There she is. Oh, it's you. 
Hi, Stephen. Well, despite what I am wearing, I'm a huge Green Arrow fan. Green Arrow has always been one of my favorites. And my question is, um, physicality aside, um, what did you do to prepare to make Oliver Queen slash Green Arrow like your own? What did you do research-wise or whatever to bring him to life? This is going to make sense. Nothing. <laughs> I trusted the material in the pilot, I trusted the people that wrote it, and most importantly, uh, David Nutter is the greatest slash most prolific director of pilots in the history of television. He's taken 18 shows to series out of 19 pilots that he's done. Um, you know, including Arrow, Flash, Supernatural, uh, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, uh, Dark Angel, The Mentalist. Dude directed The Red Wedding for the Game of Thrones. He's a legend. And when David Nutter tells you to do something, you just nod your head and say yes sir and do it. And trust, and I swear to God, first scene that we ever shot was the scene, my, my audition scene where Oliver is being, you know, stunned by the guys, and then he's gonna, he's gonna beat them up. And he turned to me, first day of shooting, and he said, he said, when you look up, when you, when you, when you look up, and when these guys see this in your eyes, I want you to make the look up, I want it to feel like you're just crawling up, like, like snail pace. And make sure that we see your eyes first, because when we put out the trailer for this pilot, this is gonna be one of the iconic images. And I swear to God it was. How could he know that? He's a wizard. <laughs> so, after the pilot, I familiarized myself with Oliver Queen and Green Arrow and the canon. And I'm very respectful of the fact that this is a character that has been around since November of 1940. And I meet people all the time that have spent their entire lives reading Green Arrow. So to be a, a modern interpretation and to hopefully live up to what they have experienced along the way, it's very important to me. Thank you. Over here, sir. <laughs> well, excuse him. Um, so my question with Firestorm affair, appearing on Flash, the Atom, Black Canary, the Oh, the Atom, era. too, yes. Yeah. Sorry, we have so many superheroes that I forget sometimes. So when are you guys just gonna get ahead of the movie and do your own Justice League? Uh, I don't know, like, like episode eight? <laughs> I'm dead serious, by the way. You know, it, it, DC, DC, is our, DC is our partner. And, um, and they haven't said, no, 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 pump the brakes, because theoretically in four years, we're gonna have a Justice League movie. Nope. They, they, they are asking us to plow ahead, and I'm fired up. We will. There you go. So the majority of the people up here have already stolen some of my questions. So first off, with the injury thing, I had heard online that you are doing a stun sequence with John Barrowman and he kicked you in the knee with steel toe boots. Oh, that jerk. <laughs> totally true. Um, <laughs> and it's the scene in episode nine of season one where uh, uh, Malcolm, we don't know it's Malcolm yet, is just beating me senseless. And he's kicking me while he's on the ground. And it was John's first night in the costume, and the costume is incredibly claustrophobic, and he can't, he doesn't have peripheral vision, and he can't really see down, and boy oh boy, he kicked me as hard as he possibly could in the leg. <laughs> and I felt bad because of how bad he felt. <laughs> anyway, if you see him, tell him it still hurts, okay? <laughs> To go to my question here. Um, sure. And then I was gonna ask for a hug, but I'll get that from the photo up later. Sure. Cool, man. Um, and just for the fans out here and everything like that, could you quickly go through your voiceover for the opening sequence of Arrow? God damn it. Yes. I kind of feel like we need some mood lighting or something. <laughs> I have been meaning to learn this properly. I recorded it at the beginning of season one, 
in the beginning of season two, and I know there's a new one for season three, so you're just gonna get a mix mash thing of a jig. Here we go. <laughs> You. <laughs> oh, look at this! This is nice! This is nice. My name is Oliver Queen. For five years, I was stranded on an island with only one goal. Survive. Now I am returning. <laughs> to save my city. I feel bad. I'm ruining this. Somebody help me, someone give me the lyrics. I need to like, I need to like know this. I'm so ashamed. I'll tell you what. What? Oh, there you go. Let's do this. I can't be the killer I once was. To honor my friend's memory, I must be something else. I must be someone else. Previously on Arrow. <laughs> Somebody is gonna see this, and the next panel that I'm at, I swear to God, I am gonna learn the intro from the pilot, the big long voiceover that sort of carried us all the way through, that ends with, my name is Oliver Queen. I'm gonna learn that, I'm gonna nail it. <laughs> Continue to stand there and look good if you wanted to. Uh, when you first found out all your, like when you were doing the reading at the table and you saw all your cast, did you recognize anybody and like have a geek out moment? Oh, for sure. That that happens all the time. Paul Blackthorne was my favorite villain on 24. Um, season three of 24 is my favorite. Like, Paul Blackthorne, really, really. <laughs> Jamie Sheridan was the VP in Homeland, which was a show that I was watching at the time. Uh, my first American job was almost, uh, was almost Melrose Place, so I knew Katie Cassidy really well, and, and I also knew her as the, like, the, possibly the only person that Liam Neeson hasn't been able to save in the past 15 years. <laughs> I was a big fan of, of the OC and Will Holland. She doesn't know that, but it's true. <laughs> and, um, oh my goodness. Uh, Roger Cross. Jack shot Roger Cross on 20. I was a big 24 fan, you know what I mean? So, this year, not so much, but it doesn't matter. Uh, um, th this does happen all the time where we get people come on the show and. I'm fans of theirs. The coolest moment uh, out of all of those was uh, I, myself, and Liam McIntyre were the last two people in the audition process to uh, take over the role of Spartacus that Andy Whitfield passed on. And I got to do a scene with Manu as Spartacus and him as Princess. So, <laughs> so when they... So when they, when they cast him as, as Slade Wilson, and the first time that we saw each other in the makeup trailer, we were just like, it's too weird, man. It's too weird. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm, I'm always gonna be a fan of the people that we have on the show. It's really fun having cool guest stars. That's great. It's a good question. There you go. Right on, right on the spot. Good for you. I'm being told we have time for one more. I'm we sorry. Two, we have two more because we have Roy over there. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, my name is Kim. Um, hey, Kim. And, and my question was, uh, were there any kind of crazy pranks on set? And if so, which one was your favorite? Any crazy pranks on set? Well, I am working with John Barrowman this year. <laughs> um, boy, oh boy. There haven't been crazy pranks so much as we were five or six episodes in. I had been working with David Ramsey a lot. He and I had become friends, but just sort of, I had been working so much that we hadn't really got a chance to know each other other than being, you know, friendly. 
and he had to come up as Diggle and whisper something into my ear. And he said the dirtiest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. By the way, he's not even on camera, okay? It's close up on me, he says this to me, and I go, And from then on, it was on. It's been on since then. If he messes up one of his lines, I almost pee my pants. I get so excited. Thank you. All right. Hi, I was just wondering, uh, easier than his, just say the catchphrase of yours to end this, I guess. Would be the best way. The what? Catchphrase, fail the city. Oh, what's your name? Phil. Phil. You have failed this city. <laughs> hey, um, if you, were, if you were standing in line to ask a question that we didn't get to you guys, just come on up on stage real fast and we'll take a quick photo for everybody out of here. Come on up.